Hey everyone! Welcome back if you're a subscriber to my channel and welcome in if this is your first time seeing one of my videos. Uh, my name is Haley, otherwise known as Fly with Haley, and I wanted to talk today about one of the probably most asked questions when I first started posting about my Beechcraft Debonair that I bought about four or five months ago. And that's how I bought it. So how could I, in 26, be able to purchase a Beechcraft Debonair? Today I wanted to talk about my story, as well as tips and tricks that I learned through my process, as well as tips and tricks that I actually heard from other people. And I also wanted to open it up to discuss this in the comments section and just create a space where we can start talking about how it is you can buy an airplane a way to be able to share information on, you know, making this dream come true because I really like, since I was a student pilot, I wanted to be an aircraft owner and it took me five years to get here, but I finally did and there's definitely a way to do it. A little bit about me, I am a flight instructor, I'm also a ferry pilot as well as a content creator, not only you know, the Fly With Haley on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, but also for Premier Aircraft Sales. Uh, so that's kind of a little background about me. I was also a loan officer, so I can write mortgage loans, and that kind of gave me a background in real estate. And I actually flipped a house in Florida not too long ago, which is also how I was able to afford the airplane. So there's actually quite a few things you can do to build income to be able to afford your dream. So when I was first looking for an airplane, I actually did <laughs> YouTube, Google, how to buy an airplane. <laughs> um, and there was a couple useful videos, but I didn't really find a video that had out of the box ideas because the main ones are pretty clear cut, but there are some creative ways to create income and some creative ways to find the right aircraft for you. So I'm here to also talk about those. And without further ado, let's get into it. Everyone you talk to who has gone through the aircraft purchase experience will tell you the very first thing you should think about is your mission. Um, so your mission means like, what are you looking for out of this airplane? Are you looking to do long cross country flights? Are you looking to cross water? Are you looking to do back country? Are you looking to land in the dirt? And this is kind of the very first step that I went through when I went to buy the Beechcraft Debonair. And at that time, I had no idea it would be a Beechcraft Debonair. So I actually journaled and wrote out exactly what I wanted. And I had a hard time, which I'm sure everyone might, um, through this part of the process because there's so many things. You want it all. You want to land in the dirt. You want to carry all your friends. You want to... And it's, just, it's hard to find everything in one airplane. So you have to look at what you're thinking about doing most in the future and plan for that. Um, so for me, I live out in the Reno Tahoe area. So at first, I almost bought a tail wheel. I was very close to buying a backcountry airplane. There's just so many, so much space out here to do a lot of backcountry flying, and I have a little experience, but not a ton. So I was, I was thinking maybe I could get into that type of flying and learn with the airplane. And last summer I did get my tailwheel endorsement, so I have done training in a tailwheel, but I haven't done extensive training. So it would be definitely something I would have to learn with. I obviously didn't end up getting the tailwheel. I love being able to take my friends and family up. I love going on long travel. I love doing cross-country flights. So I was, even though I do want to land in the dirt, I can still get an airplane that's land in the dirt still and be able to carry four people in weight. Um, and I chose a four-person airplane simply because the six-seaters, which maybe I'll end up upgrading to in the future, but. Those tended to be more expensive. I stuck with the four seat high performance. So that's the next thing I thought of. I thought it was a cross country travel. I want to have something fuel efficient. I want to have something that can carry weight. So something high performance, um, especially because I'm here in the mountains, having a high performance airplane makes all the difference. The three that I landed on for what I wanted. So cross country, being able to carry weight. Um, and honestly, I'm a low wing girl. I like high wing. I've done a lot of training with students in high wings, but I've just kind of always liked the look of a low wing. And you know what? When I, like the last three years before, I went and bought the Beechcraft Debonair, my favorite airplane was the Piper Comanche. 
250 or 260 so I almost bought it so when I when I was looking I was looking at 1-5 November Charlie and I was actually also looking at a Piper Comanche and I ended up having to choose between the two and it was a very hard decision because they were both really great airplanes um, the Comanche actually had much better avionics so and it had a much newer engine both were mid-timed so the Comanche for those reasons seemed like the better choice but it was let's see I think it was around 20 knots slower than the debonair and it was still burning around the same fuel burn debonair burns a little more but on the same fuel burn and it couldn't carry quite as much weight it was close but not quite so and I also realized so this is a really well-made Comanche but it's the same exact price as the Beechcraft debonair so the Bonanza, right? The Beechcraft Bonanza. Everyone knows the Bonanza. And everyone knows it for a reason. Everyone you'll talk to, there's not really someone I've ever talked to who's like, I hate the Bonanza. It's, a, it's just a great airplane. Um, so I ended up choosing Debbie, the Beechcraft Debonair. But um, the other airplane I was actually looking at, I was looking at the Piper Comanche, the Beechcraft, any kind of Bonanza. I actually didn't know about the Debonair until I was looking for an airplane. I thought the only choices was like, the newer A36 Bonanza or the V-Tail, like the classic V-Tail. And I was looking at V-Tails a little bit, but then I just heard so much about the rudder vader and the troubles you can have with having to replace them if you need to, and they're all pretty old. So there's some unique challenges with the V-Tail that I personally chose not to go that route, even though they they look like awesome airplanes. I've actually never flown one, but they look really cool. And then I thought it was the A36, but then I found out that there was something called the Beechcraft Debonair, which is basically the original Bonanza that has the straight tail, but at the time they called it the Debonair. So that's the Debonair name just means that's kind of the older straight tail Bonanza. So. I'm really happy that I found out about it and it just I found out about it by researching and keep googling around and so between the Piper Comanche the Beechcraft Debonair I was actually also looking at a Rockwell Commander 114 and that airplane is really cool it doesn't outperform its competitors it doesn't outperform the Bonanza and it doesn't outperform the Comanche but I just really loved how it was laid out it was so logically laid out it had levers, it was a little newer, um, it still could go pretty fast, it had still a good fuel burn, and it was actually more spacious in the cabin, it just was a little slower. Uh, I still think it's a cool airplane, and I probably I would have looked at one and considered buying it if I found one, because the commanders, especially the 114, hard to find. Like <laughs> I was looking around for probably a year, and I only found maybe one that was worth looking at so so that's another thing is the Bonanza is made for so long it's still being made and there's a reason for that and there's so many out there so honestly it's kind of the best one to shop for in my opinion however there's just so many good options uh, let's get to the next segment which is budget so you're gonna figure out your mission you know what do you want to do with your airplane and then the next part is what can I afford to buy? So what can you afford to buy? So for me, my story is I wanted an airplane that was maximum $125,000. That's what I could afford and it did put me in a good range. I could find an airplane that maybe didn't have the best avionics, but I could find an airplane that was what I needed. Now, that might not be everyone's budget, right? So you can find airplanes if you're looking at something cheaper. So if you're looking at wanting to buy something around the $40,000, $50,000. So planes can be the price of a nice car. I've seen Tacomas be the same price as an airplane, and it's a nicer airplane. So you can find an airplane for cheaper than what I spent on mine. And for everyone wondering, what I spent on the Debonair was $124,900, <laughs> so I saved $100. Uh, but yep, that's the big price tag on Debbie. But um, you can find airplanes like the Cessna 150 is usually on the cheaper end. And honestly, guys, like experimentals, like the RV, I actually love RVs, but the experimentals, 
you just need to make sure that they're you got to do your research on experimentals but those can actually sell for cheaper some of them not i don't think necessarily the newer rvs but some of those can sell for cheaper as well as the tail wheels so something like a 180 not so much but generally like a 140 or something like that really isn't as much as you might think and that's because the things that are on the market right now not a lot of people have actually their tail wheel endorsement so it's something that's more of a niche so i found online it's actually a little cheaper to go the tail wheel route so that's an idea to, um, if you want to go get a cheaper airplane now something i've noticed recently as of july 2024 is the market for 172s and like their key 180 they're all way more expensive than they should be. Like, I do love those airplanes, they're awesome, but the market is so inflated for used Cherokees and 172s. So I honestly, ugh, they're great airplanes, but you're just gonna spend more than they're worth, you know, in my mind. I would avoid those. Uh, like, if you're gonna get a 172 when I was looking, um, for maybe $20,000 less than a 182, which in my opinion is a much more capable airplane. I train out of Cherokees and 172s at my CFI job, so I fly them all the time. They're awesome, and if you can find a cheap price on one, then they're they're cool. They're very user friendly and trainer airplanes. You're gonna have an easier time with an airplane like that. However, they're just outlandishly expensive right now, and I hope that goes down. But I heard it was because the flight school is like tied them up, so you making up the prices. There's a high demand. So we talked about tailwheel, experimental, um, you just have to search the internet like gems if you look hard enough. I was looking for an airplane, I was looking maybe three times a day. Like I check morning, midday, and night. Because <laughs> I very much wanted to find an airplane. So you just have to keep digging and you will find that gem. And obviously if you can afford a higher priced airplane, Bonanzas that already had the avionics done, awesome airplanes. Um, and of course, I work for Premier Aircraft, so I ferry the Diamond aircrafts, and those things are probably the nicest airplane I have ever flown in the general aviation world. Like, it, the DA-62 is amazing, like, it's probably one of the best multis out there. And it literally, it feels like you're flying a Porsche, like, it's just so well made. It's made of carbon fiber and it took me around the factory and they showed me like how they build into the seats there's so much safety and so much time you know safety for the pilot in that airplane so it's just it's it's great i love that airplane um a lot of more expensive price tag so if you can afford that great i love it but a 50 is the single kind of the da62 and of course a da40 or da20 i've actually seen people go for the da20 as a personal airplane because it is actually pretty fast. I was ferrying them. I think I was going like 130 knots, like you can use in the DA-20, so. And it burns, I think it, it was burning like four gallons an hour. So it's a great little airplane. However, it's a two-seater, so it's not big on carrying a lot of weight. And you do have to stop, you know, three-ish hours to fuel up. So it's not like a super long distance, but to be honest, you wanna stop, usually every three hours to go to the bathroom anyway, so um, usually not a problem in my mind, at least when I was sparing the airplane. Those are some ideas from me, and <clears throat> let's move on to kind of my story and where to find an airplane. When I first started, I was looking at Barnstormers, so that website is awesome. It kind of looks like it's out of the 90s, and um, Barnstormer was awesome because you could find a lot of the like mid-priced gems so it's really good for looking for a plane that's you don't have price to worry about right like you don't have all the money in the world or you don't have a big budget so barnstormers was awesome for finding airplanes another thing to look at is controller controller is probably one of the first ones besides barnstormer that pops up on your google when you google buying an airplane Controller tends to have the higher priced airplanes. They always tend to be a little more expensive when you search on there, but great website as well if you're looking for an airplane controller is definitely a stop. Hangar 67, I think it's called Hangar 67. I also looked on there as well as like local and non-local brokers. So you could just kind of in each area try and find a broker that's selling the airplane you're looking for. 
Um, and brokers can be great because they have their own like blue of airplanes for sale. I would just say um, I actually bought Debbie from a broker and it went well. So there's definitely great brokers out there. Uh, just be careful buying from a broker and they're to sell you the airplane. So uh, keep that in mind. You're not talking to like an owner or something. You're talking to a broker. Um, and again, I bought Debbie from a broker. I work for brokers, like have no problem with that. Like I think it's um, the broker who sold me Debbie but did a great job I and mean, gave me a lot of detail. He was honest and he was a great guy. But just keep in mind they're brokers and some of them, you know, be like a little sharky. So yeah, keep that in mind with brokers. Um, a fun place that you might not know about is Facebook Marketplace. So uh, believe it or not, there's several like groups Pretty, a pretty big following and they do really post a lot of crafts for sale so there's actually a pretty big market if you go into Facebook marketplace and you join these groups so that's another idea for like, to search for an airplane and then of course just word of mouth honestly if you go around you just ask around your local airport just ask you know honestly I've heard friends who found just absolute gems they got it for like a deal because they met someone at the airport and they were selling their airplane and they were right there for it. So that is also a good thing to keep in mind. And one thing I also want to mention is when you're buying an airplane, you also, before you buy the airplane, should really think about where it's staying. So if you're going to go buy a really nice airplane, like I went and bought, I consider the Debonair a pretty nice airplane, I wanted a hangar for it. So I was lucky enough to be able to find one. I'm renting it from a private owner. I would keep that in mind if you're going to have to keep it outside, depending on where you are. Like if you're in Florida, that can be really difficult with the, like, so many elements on the airplane in Florida and places like on the coast too. So uh, keep that in mind if you're going to buy, you might want to buy a little less expensive of an airplane or just, I wouldn't go buy a really nice brand new Bonanza and go put it outside on chains. I mean, different opinions on this I and mean, people will say, hey, I have my airplane out on chains forever and it's totally great, it's fine, like no problem with it. Um, out here in the desert or, you know, Texas or somewhere like that where maybe just the sun beats on the paint a little bit and that's kind of all you get, but like, be careful, like know your area, know where you're going to keep the airplane and keep that in mind when you're buying the airplane. Right, so you have found your airplane and you're super excited and it's you get so many emotions. When I first saw Debbie, I had already been looking at another debonair and the process was just taking so long and I was starting to get discouraged because the broker was just kind of stringing me on and he kept telling me like the airplane to the pre-buy and then I kept getting pushed back and not even for like good reasons and I was getting discouraged when I found Debbie, I was a little more like, okay, it's gonna work. It's kind of like you're puppy shopping. When you're puppy shopping, you're afraid to fall in love because you need to find the right dog for you and you just want to take them all home. And um, yeah, it is an emotional experience is kind of what I'm trying to get across. First seminar I looked at, I was so excited about, but then I kind of had to throw my emotions back in and just say, hey, I'm buying a machine, I'm buying an asset. So you have to have a kind of business mindset about it. You can't get too tied to one airplane because I mean I before I bought Debbie, um, 1-5 November Charlie, I probably looked at three other airplanes. Actually no, like I talked to five different people about airplanes I genuinely wanted. So keep that in mind. Your search will probably lead you through several different airplanes. And do your research before you do the pre-buy. So a big thing I believe in is doing a pre-buy inspection. I cannot stress that enough because you're buying something that carries your life in it and your friends and your family and you're buying something that's expensive. You know, I really think do a pre-buy because it matters, you know. So also what matters is finding the right person to do your pre-buy. Um, do not have someone who has ties to the owner or the broker. And um, I know that can be hard, just read the room and make a good educated decision about it. But another company that helped me, and AOPA by the way, it's a great organization, and they're the ones who sent me over to something called Savvy. So Savvy, I've heard some people love Savvy, I've seen some people be like, oh, I don't know. Uh, Savvy for me actually was very helpful because I had no idea how to buy an airplane. Like, I'd, 
no experience, I had no one to guide me, so I wanted basically to guide me through this process. And they were great because they have their own team of mechanics that look through, you know, boroscope and compression tests and logbooks for you. They have a free logbook check, by the way. So if you want to get your logbooks checked, you can send it into Savvy and they'll look at them and tell you if there's any discrepancies. So that's a really good tool on your side. I am still a part of their maintenance subscription. It was like 800 something dollars. And they basically do everything. They'll find a good company to do your pre-buy. So they'll look on the back end, they'll look at what's called tickets, and they'll look at these tickets and see if they're good or bad, so it's basically like reviews, and they'll see if they have a lot of experience with the airplane that you're looking to, to do a pre-buy. You really need someone, like a guy who knows the airplane that you're going to buy. You don't want to get a P that works on Cessnas and you're getting a Bonanza, you know, make sure you have someone familiar with your airplane. So if you have no idea where to find a pre-buy, a mechanic to do it for you, Savvy is a good option, and that's what I did. Alright, so let's say the pre-buy went well, so make sure you're looking for corrosion, make sure you're looking for a scope, make sure you're looking at compression tests. Remember, compression tests aren't the end of the world. There's a lot of things that go into them. Sometimes cylinders will read bad, and the next day they'll read well, so just keep everything, like a whole picture. What I also did was I always had a purchase contract. So a lot of times you have to put it down, you know, pause it usually for an airplane. And I actually used an Estro company for me because I wanted to make sure everything went through kind of right steps. I didn't want to have any problems or hiccups on the way. Um, and most people are going to be good and they're going to do everything they say they're going to do, but you always kind of cover your bases in case you find that bad egg that doesn't. So I did do a pre-purchase contract, and um, you can find it on AOPA, actually AOPA has some, I think Savvy does as well, so they will help you through that whole process if you do go that route. Um, but have a pre-purchase agreement, make sure you cover on your bases, you haven't agreed to buy the airplane, it goes through a good pre-buy, or they're not like one of the things I was talking to was actually a V-tail Bonanza, and it, looks like it was such a clean airplane that I was like, okay, consider it. Broker who I was talking to, he was going to give me five days to do a pre-buy and close. And that's just not enough time. I get a pre-buy schedule done, stuff, it takes longer than five days. I know that it can sometimes work in a short period of time like that if you can somehow find a situation. But I, in my experience and with everyone I've talked to, no one's been able to close an airplane that fast doing a pre-buy, you know, all those things. Alright, so let's say the pre-buy went well, you love the airplane, and you're closing. So let's talk about the big thing that everyone wants to know, and that is how do you pay for the airplane? <laughs> I got a lot of questions about this, I got a lot of assumptions. There is a couple different ways you can do it, and probably the first and a way some people go is just financing. So AOPA does a lot, a pretty good job financing craft, but keep in mind aircraft are like luxury item. It'd be like buying a boat, not a house. So these lenders that AOPA are working for are a lot more strict when it comes to income, you know, kind of income you make, what's your debt, what's your credit. And they can honestly say no for whatever reason they can make up. I've seen some very, very qualified people. I'm a loan officer. Like, I do this. You know, I've seen some very qualified people get shut down for loans. And just keep in mind, they will take not only your debt to income. They just have some weird, they have some weird ways that they like to structure their loans. So make sure when you talk to an agent, whether it be AOPA or a different service sure that you ask them everything that they're going to like evaluate you off of because you can kind of head down a road where you're like okay I'm going to get approved and then you're just disappointed when you don't get approved so make sure you ask what are does this lender require what are their outlines for being approved for a loan so I cannot stress that enough if you're going to talk to a financing agent make sure you know that now another route you can go is of course buying a cash. So that is actually the route I went, believe it or not. I kept up for five years. I put a solid chunk of money away for five years to save up for the, the day I bought the Debbie. 
Um, I worked hard. I was a loan officer for a time, so that was a pretty big chunk of my income that went into the airplane. I was a flight instructor when you know, rates kind of started going up, so I started losing a little business. So I ended up being a flight instructor, ferry pilot. I was just always sending money away. I also actually bought a house in Florida, and um, it did increase in value by the time I sold it, like I think a year and a half or something, two years later. So I did actually get a chunk of change from the value of, you know, kind of flipping a house. Um, and that can be a great way to make change, actually, is real estate. Real estate's a good, solid way. Um, and there's that's a whole other video if you want to talk about that. But that is kind of the way I went. And another way you can go if you do have it available to you is an equity line. So if you, for whatever reason, get not approved from financing, and they're so picky, so don't feel sad if that happens to you. It happens to a lot of people. You can also do an equity line. So if you do own a house or something like that, you can actually get money out of it. And it's kind of like a second loan. So you could do something like that should you need to. So keep in mind, buying an airplane is an investment. Definitely something you want to put a lot of thought into. But it is so rewarding. I've been having a great time with my Beechcraft Debonair. It's made me a much better pilot. It's made me a much better knowledge-wise taking apart all these different things on my airplane. And I feel like it really, really helps the experience. And I get to get up and fly my friends down to San Francisco for the weekend. Or, and I get there and lower. It opens up the world to own your own airplane. You don't have to rent. You don't have to worry about being on a schedule. Keep in mind, owning an airplane, maintenance is probably the biggest expense. So what I did buying an airplane is I actually put aside a chunk of change as well to make sure I had any maintenance issues I was going to be able to pay for it. And that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, please feel free to leave your story in the comment section below. I'd really love to just, again, open up a space for all of us to talk about how we bought our airplanes or our experience with it, tips and tricks so that more people can join general aviation and own their own airplane and know that it is not an unachievable goal. So thank you guys for watching and I hope this helped and I will see you next time.